Hey guys, what's good? Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So we're getting into Alma chapters 9 and 10 today. Now at this point in your own study, may I recommend a great conference talk to study. It is called Lessons from Alma and Amulek. It is October of 2016 from Dieter F. Uchtdorf. I would totally recommend that as he goes through and talks about things we can learn from Alma and things we can learn from Amulek right around this time period as this amazing missionary companion companionship goes back into the land of Ammonihah. Now Alma in chapter 9, he gets right to the root of why the people of Ammonihah are struggling. Now you're going to notice a pattern here from about verses 19 to 22 that Alma really gets into. Alma says, all of these bad things you're doing come after having had so much light and so much knowledge given unto them from the Lord their God, after having been such a highly favored people of the Lord, after having been favored above every nation, kindred, tongue, or people, after having had all things made known unto them according to their desires and their faith and their prayers of that which has been, which is, and is to come, having been visited by the Spirit of God, having conversed with angels, having been spoken unto by the voice of the Lord, having had the spirit of prophecy, the spirit of revelation, also many gifts, speaking with tongues, the gift of preaching, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of translation, after having been delivered of God out of the land of Jerusalem by the hand of the Lord, having been saved from famine and from sickness and all manner of diseases of every kind, having waxed strong in battle that they might not be destroyed, having been brought out of bondage time after time, having been kept and preserved until now, they having been prospered until they are rich in all manner of things. Now behold, I say to you that if this people who have received so many blessings from the hand of the Lord should transgress contrary to the light and knowledge which they do have, I say unto you, if this is the case, that if they should fall into transgression, it would be far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. So here Alma is just saying, look, you guys have received so much and you are still falling away. The Lamanites can claim a little bit of ignorance with this in the sense that they're just following after the traditions of their fathers. Many of them are just acting with the amount of light and knowledge they have. But the Nephites, you guys have received all of these good things and you are still choosing to fall away. Now, I remember years ago as I was teaching seminary, I asked my seminary class, I said, what happens when you don't remember these important things that you have been taught? One kid raised his hand and very profoundly said, you forget. When you don't remember, you forget. And the kids all looked at him like, boy, that's so profound. I'm like, nah, it's not really profound. When you don't remember, you forget. But the thing is, the Nephites have been taught all of these things and they are falling away after they have been taught all of these things. You go all the way up in this chapter to verse number 8, 9, and 10. Look at this concept here. O ye wicked and perverse generation, how have ye forgotten the tradition of your fathers? Yea, how soon have ye forgotten the commandments of God? Do ye not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of God? Do ye not remember that they were all led by him through the wilderness? Have ye forgotten so soon how many times he has delivered your fathers out of the hands of their enemies and preserved them from being destroyed, even by the hands of their own brethren? So they have forgotten because they're not focused focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time for them to repent. Now you remember what the angel said to Alma, you go in there and you preach unto them repentance, except they repent. So what does Alma do? Verse number 12, behold, now I say unto you that he commandeth you to repent and except ye repent, you can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. He has commanded you to repent or he will utterly destroy you from the face of the earth. Yea, he will visit you in his anger, in his fierce anger, and he will not turn away. And then we get that wonderful thesis statement of the Book of Mormon in verse 13. Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, you'll prosper in the land. Inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, you shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. This message keeps coming up over and over again in the Book of Mormon. Again, in verse number 15, except ye repent. So apparently the people in Ammonihah have forgotten that they need to repent. And boy, we humans forget a lot of things, but once we forget that we can change and repent, that takes us down some dark turns in our lives. Now, our world does not like the idea of repentance. It's very much an accept me for who I am. And I totally get that idea, but we are not here just to stay who we are. We are here to change. Human beings want to be able to change. I'm actually reading a book right now. It's called Immunity to Change. And it talks about how we want to, by nature, we want to change. We also have a part of us built into us that fights against change and does 
not want to change. It is constantly the natural man versus the spiritual man. It's that battlefield of our minds that keeps going on, that desire we have to change, and then that tendency within us to stop that, to protect ourselves from that change. And the people of Ammonihah have let that natural man take over, which is why Alma is coming in to teach them the importance of repentance. And I love how who he brings with him is a perfect example of repentance. We get to see a wonderful man named Amulek, and we get a little bit into his story in chapter 10 about how he changes. Now, whenever I read about Amulek, I always think of an alarm clock. I think of a snooze button on an alarm clock. How many of us, when we wake up in the morning, and I do this many times, in fact, I did it this morning, you hit the snooze button several times. When the alarm is trying to get your attention, you push it away. That is what Amulek did. Verse number two in chapter 10, he even says, now I'm Amulek, I am the son of Gedona, who is the son of Ishmael. He starts going through his entire lineage here. Verse number three, a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who is a descendant of Manasseh. Verse number four, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, behold, many kindred and friends. I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. He's like, look, you guys know me. Verse number five. Now, after all of this, meaning the lineage that I have had, the life that I have built for myself, my friends, my kindred, my family, after all of this, I have never known much of the ways of the Lord and his mysteries and marvelous power. I said I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his marvelous power, yea, even in the preservation of the lives of his people. Verse number six has such cool statements from Amulek. Nevertheless, I did harden my heart, for I was called many times and I would not hear. There's your snooze button you hit many times. Therefore, and this phrase is so cool, I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore, I went on rebelling against God and the wickedness of my heart. And then he talks about how an angel appeared unto him and he invites Alma in because of what that angel said to him. But you look at that phrase again back in verse number six. I was called many times and I would not hear. I knew, yet I would not know. Amulek had been hitting the snooze button on the Holy Ghost for the majority of his life. I read a quote from Neil A. Maxwell that I love with regards to Amulek. It says, Amulek is a classic example of an essentially good man being out of touch with the great spiritual realities. He resisted the things of the spirit because Though he was basically good, he was preoccupied with the cares of the world. Youth may even have gifts, including the gift of the Holy Ghost, and yet be like counterparts of old who knew it not. Concerning the gospel message, they may be like busy and preoccupied Amulek. Now, I've written this little note in my scriptures. When we are preoccupied with the cares of the world, it is hard to hear the voice of the Spirit and to start thinking celestial and letting God prevail and hearing the voice of the Lord and repenting daily like our wonderful prophet has asked us to focus on. Now, like Amulek, we humans can forget a lot of things and we can hit the snooze button on a lot of things. But when we start hitting that snooze button and forgetting to repent, that is when things really start going rough for us. So I love that Alma's message to the people of Ammonihah is to repent. And you get to see actually some pretty incredible experiences of repentance, which we will start talking about tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing these messages. As always, we're so grateful that you do that. And if you like what you see, please click that like button. And you got to go check out our amazingly comfortable gospel theme socks at bombsocks.com. Godspeed. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.